Thank you for presentations, and I'm very happy to talk in this conference. Uh, yeah, I, I came to Miami several times, but this is the first time after this pandemic. And uh, so this talk is uh, uh, come up. So this idea of the chromohaustal convergence come up to the, uh, while I'm thinking that first should be a uh, homological mirror symmetry over Novikov ring, lambda zero. So Novikov ring is a kind of this formal power series, AI, T lambda I, T is a formal parameter, and AI is a say, complex number, and the lambda i is, uh, ah, I'm sorry, zero is included. So this is no negative number. And uh, it's limited plus infinity. So you have this kind of formal sum and it is uh, easy to see that this is a ring. And uh, we take its uh, field of fractions. That means that uh, we include lambda i to be negative. And lambda i zero q is that uh, we restrict lambda i to be a rational number. So we consider this kind of rings. And maybe, uh, let me start a few remarks about the story in B side. So we consider this a uh, uh, formal scheme, or maybe a SP or a spec or a uh, formal power series ring. And you have, suppose you have this uh, maybe family of Calabria manifold. Parameter, it's a formal family of this Calabria manifold. It's a kind of formal deformation theory. And this uh, uh, formal power series ring just has two points, just a special fiber, T is zero and the generic point. And we assume that the uh, special fiber ca can be singular. Typically, it's a maximal generation point. And we require the general fiber that if we in case if we invert T is uh, smooth, such a Calabria manifold. So this is, I think, in a situation when this uh, mirror symmetry appears in the B side. And then uh, we go, so we take this uh, n fold branch to cover of this thing. So we just include T to the power of one over N. So we put a box, you have this n-fold branch to cover. And suppose we have two chain complexes of coherence shifts on this, uh, on this, uh, on this xn. Then I want to define a metric D on this, on this on the moduli space of chain complex of coherence shifts. So the definition is that this uh, difference between these two chain complexes is smaller than epsilon. If, if, at the for, if, at the for, if only foreign folds, so suppose you have some M, then we take this uh, M fold branch to cover of X of N. So we include T to the power, oops, T to the power one over N M, that's contained here. Then we put back this space and, and this EI to here. And then suppose that E one M and E two M is uh, somehow chain, almost chain homotopy equivalent. It means that you have T, T prime, T goes to E1M to E2M, T prime go to E2M to E1M, and you have this S and S prime. And T and T prime is a chain map, which means that this differential is zero. And if you compose T and T prime, it's an automorphism by E1. And that is different from, from this the T, uh, multiplication by T to the power epsilon by some co-boundary, D of S. And if you compose other way, T prime and T, then it is again almost uh, equal to this T, T to the power epsilon and the difference is D to the power S prime. So let me remind you that uh, if you work over Novikov field, lambda, then we invert T. So this implies that over lambda, these two chain complex are chain homotopy equivalent. But over lambda zero, it is not chain, it's not necessary because this T, T to the power epsilon is not invertible. So we can take this kind of, and it is easy to see that this is a, a metric on the space of all, all, kind of all isomorphism class of chain complex. Then we take this uh, uh, inductive limit of uh, derived category of coherence yes of X of M and, and go to infinity. And we use this metric space. We use this D and you get a metric space, which is a kind of rather very cumbersome metric space. And we take its completions. And I believe, uh, yeah. Is it obvious that uh, this notion of chain homotopy extends to derived category? Uh, uh, I, I think derived categories, uh, 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 object of derived categories are homotopy equivalence classes, right? 
or with the chain complexes? Chain complexes which are injected or something. I mean, you two, two chain, chain complexes, chain homotopy equivalent over lambda zero, then it's this distance is zero. You have T and T prime, S and S prime, so that epsilon is zero. Right? That, 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 just the definition. And, and, and that's true. Like, things can be equivalent to the derived category without being chain homotopy. I think derived category, object of derived category is chain homotopy class of chain complex of the coherent sheet. Right? So we have this metric. And you want to take completion of this metric spaces. And I'm not so much a good expert of uh, Berkowitz spectra, but I believe this is some kind of Berkowitz spectra or inductive limit of Berkowitz spectra. This is nasty, nasty vector space. It's infinitely generated. For example, you, suppose you have this kind of you know, homology group of some chain complex is uh, something like a lambda zero plus lambda zero T a lambda zero plus lambda zero T B lambda zero, blah, blah, blah. It may have infinitely many torsions. So you have this all the torsions. And uh, so this is a kind of nasty, very bad vector spaces, but the uh, Berkowitz spectra is that kind of thing. So you have some very kind of complicated metric space. But this is not terribly bad. So, I, so something I want to do is just a mirror of this uh, uh, B model thing. So I want to go to A model, and I want to explain what should be the mirror of this uh, complicated metric spaces. So let me take a symplectic manifold X, and let me recall some very well-known thing about Hamiltonian dynamics. We consider H. H is a smooth function on X times zero one interval. And then HT is a, this um, function of X, so that HT X is H X of T. Then we take Hamiltonian vector fields associated to this uh, Hamiltonians. That is defined by this formula, right? Omega B X H T is a D H T B. And then uh, we take, we, we integrate this uh, Hamiltonian vector field to, to obtain phi T H. It, 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 at zero, it is just an identity map. Uh, this is a, a script X, I'm sorry, this print. If we de derivative of T is H is a kind of this vector field. Ah, this is also make misprint. I'm very sorry, this is not this one. This is phi T H. Right. So we have this Hamilton Victor field. And uh, the well known so the group of Hamilton linear morphism is the set of all time one map for all these uh, Hamiltonians. That's a group, and this is a very famous group. And it's one of the main targets of the study of symplectic topology. So now uh, I want to recall uh, one important notion on this uh, Hofer metric. So Hofer defines some in important metric on this group of Hamilton linear morphism. And Hofer metric is the following things. So let's consider this uh, Hamiltonians. And I, I, I define it normally just that it, it takes supreme number of HT minus infinite number of HT and it, you integrate. That, that's a, a, a norm of H. And for Hamiltonian linear morphism, it's norm, it's just an infinite number of these Hamiltonians which represent this P. And I want to uh, emphasize that this is some kind of a C0 norm because it, it has, it has take the sub minus inf. So it, it doesn't know about the first derivative of Hamiltonians. And what is very curious is that, uh, you know, this de definition of a Hamiltonian vector field contains fast derivative. This is no Hamiltonian equations. And uh, nevertheless, this, this norm is a, has a good meaning. It's a kind of important discovery by Hofer. And it is, it is a kind of one of the early days of simple topology, where the simple topology exists. It's, it's just this kind of things. So we define this Hofer norm to this uh, C and C inverse P. So this is a definition of Hofer norm. And the important theorem by Hofer is that this is actually a metric of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. morphism. It implies that if, if this is zero, then, then two, uh, two Hamiltonian diffeomorphism morphism are equal. And because of this, you know, this is a C0 norm, it's rather weak. So this is a very highly non-trivial that this kind of norm exists. You see one, it's much easier, the C0 norm. But this is the important theorem by Hofer. So this is the Hofer metric. I want to include, so, I, so this Hofer metric uh, is very, uh, there are something very much related to the metric by Chekhanov on the space of a Lagrangian sum manifold. So we consider lag X, the space of all Lagrangian sum manifolds L of X. And if you have a two Lagrangian sum manifold, I want to define Hofer Chekhanov distance between these two Lagrangian sum manifold. It is just that 
uh, inch bump of Hoha norm of Hamiltonian linear homomorphism, which send L to L prime. So you have a two diagonal summary for you take this. Suppose if there is no such P, it is infinite. Suppose A L and L prime is Hamiltonian linear homomorphic. We take uh, inch bump of this Hoha, Hoha norm of the Hamiltonian, which, which send L to L prime. And it is again very surprising that this is actually a metric. It implies that if this inch bump is zero, then L is equal to L prime. That's a check out of the important theorem. And this is a kind of one of the series of theorems that simple topology exists, what kind of C0 simple topology exists. And this is proved by check out of, I think this is kind of use the idea from free of homology. So this is a check out of metric. So now I write one, one uh, a, bit, uh, a bit dangerous conjecture. It should be homological mirror symmetric conjecture over Novikov ring. So we consider this uh, completions of the space of all the Ragnar manifold with respect to this Hofer Chekhanov metric. It's horrible metric space. And I think practically nothing is known about these completions. And to understand this completion is one important problem in simple topology. Then the conjecture is that if, if this, uh, this family is mirror to X, then this completion is a, co is, is a kind of a subset, at least in a C0 sense, of the completion of this uh, um, the object of the library category of coherent sheaves with respect to the metric I just explained at the beginning. This is the first part of the conjecture. And the second part of the conjecture is following. So this is something like, uh, uh, actually, I'm a bit cheating, but I need to include so-called bounding chain. But we can, we can include bounding chain on these completions. And the second point is that uh, there, this, this is a kind of object part of some homotopy equivalence of a filtered NVD category over lambda zero. So there, is, uh, there, I was, so there, there are some filtered NVD category whose object set of is element of this plus bounding chain. And this one has some kind of a derived category and kind of, it's, it's, it's a kind of NVD category. And homological mirror symmetry conjecture is that this inclusion is covered by the homotopy equivalence of filtered NVT categories. And you know, this is somehow, uh, and, uh, and I, 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 unfortunately I can't prove it, and it, this is very difficult conjecture to prove, because first of all, this metric space itself is horrible. This lab X is a kind of in the space of all the how many forms already very horrible, and it takes completions with respect to the C0 norm. Yeah? Saku. Um, I didn't check. Uh, probably one can prove it, but still, it is not so easy. Okay. I I can do something on a case of S two. Okay. That's coming at the end. But uh, so first of all, I want to mention one theorem, which is I, I can prove. So it, it, so the proof theorem is the following: thing. If you take L with a subset of this uh, completions. And I assume that this is separable. Separable means that you have a countable subset, which is dense. Then we can actually construct a filter NVT category whose object set is an element of this separable set plus bounding chain. And unfortunately, I cannot still construct NVT category so that which include all this Lagrangian summary for and its completions. This is uncountable. For example, in the case of T2, then this set is actually uncountable because there are uncountably many collector components. There are uncountable in many different Lagrangian summary for, which is not Hamilton isotopic to each other. So, uh, so and there are some problems to construct this NVT category. And usually, so far, uh, uh, I, I, we, we study only the case when this set is a finite, but uh, we can increase so that it is separable. That's the application of this chrome fast convergence. And as far as it's separable, we can go, but more than that, I don't know how to do it yet. So at least it, it makes sense sometimes. And for example, in, in a case like a funnel, then uh, as you know, that uh, kind of basically only finitely many Lagrangian sum manifold. In a like, like a case of a toric manifold, you have only finitely many toric fibers, which has a non trivial free homology. Then you move it by Hamiltonian isotopy. So, in a case, uh, maybe separable case is enough. But in a Calabrian case, all, all, all the SYG fibers are not Hamiltonian isotopic to each other. So, you have uncountably many. So, this, this, this one actually is not good enough to obtain this. Uh, 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 to, to obtain the NVT category, so whose uh, which contain all the Lagrangian sum manifold, but uh, maybe I need to think more uh, a bit different formulations. 
but uh, at least one can do this theorem. So, so uh, and for this, uh, and uh, on also kind of for this kind of homological mirror symmetry, I believe that I, I need to no, use the notion of this uh, filtered NFT house of convergence of filtered NFT category. But to go there, I want to explain some, some uh, other story, which uh, is a kind of, uh, which, which, which is a, a version of this uh, things. So that is something called a C0 robustness of most homology. And this kind of thing is discussed by people working on this persistent homology. And the, 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 there's a book written by Paul Terbich and his courses about this, and you can see about it, but I, I just explained very small portions. So C0 robustness means that you have a two most functions, which are C0 closed. So you have these functions, you have just two critical points, and another function. So this is just C0 closed. So it's not C1 closed. So you, you may have some other critical point. So you have this uh, new critical point X and Y. And the F and the F epsilon, this is C0 distance is smaller than epsilon. And I want to claim that most homology of F is in a sense close to most homology of F epsilon. And for, for, so in, in which sense I can say. So let me recall what are the most homology. So we have this most complex. It's a free Abelian, free lambda zero module whose generator is a critical point of F. Uh, I use this Novikov ring to have this kind of this type story. So I want to call the boundary operator, which is just a count of the gradient line joining P and Q. But I took this uh, weight, weight is t to the power t p f p minus f q. So that, that, that's a kind of way to use this um, um, most complex using lambda zero. And that's actually very similar to what we did in the case of Lagrangian player theory. So what, what is this most homology? So if you take this f, you have a p and q, the boundary operator goes to t to the power a of q. So the most homology is lambda zero divided by t to the power a lambda zero. And you go this, you have this some, some uh, four boundary operator and you calculate it a bit. You have a two component, which is a kind of a prime, a prime is the difference between p and q and epsilon, f, epsilon is the difference of value of x and y. So this is a, a result of calculations. So what we know about it is that this A and A prime is very close. F, is, F and F prime is kind of, C zero norm is smaller than epsilon. So A minus A prime is epsilon. And this epsilon is also very small. So from this, so, so we, we can say that these two are somehow close in, in, in a certain sense. And this, this is something called a, a bottle, bottle metric. Yeah, there are some name of the metrics which is known in the persistent homology. In that sense, this is close. And if you know that, uh, if you think these two chain complexes and uh, you re remember the metric I mentioned at the beginning of this V-model cases, and this is close in that sense. You can see that way. So most homology of F is close to the most homology of F option. So then uh, uh, there is a similar story for Lagrangian player theory which I want to explain. So suppose we have two Lagrangian sum manifold and which are transversal. Then we consider this, uh, using this boundary chain, we can define Lagrangian free homology over Novikov ring, lambda zero. And that is a kind of, there's a structure theorem approved by uh, Ono and myself. It is a direct sum of lambda zero divided by p to the power ai lambda zero. And ai is a, a number from zero, including plus infinity. Which is not uh, which is uh, not increasing, and uh, maybe I need to mention so lambda zero divided by t to the power infinity lambda zero is by definition lambda zero. Lambda zero divided by t to the power zero lambda zero by definition is zero. So in a case when this ai is uh, infinity, you have this free factor, and ai is zero, you have nothing. So, and, and, and there is only finitely many AI, which is not zero. So you have finitely many lambda zero, and other thing is that lambda zero divided by TAI lambda zero totions. So that is a kind of structure theorem of this uh, play homology. And, and when net A vector is A1, A2, blah, blah, blah. And then I, write, I wrote this right hand side as a lambda zero A vector. Yeah? Yeah. Is this structure theorem a factor 
Yes. Uh, what is the cosmology of cosmology or cosmology? So it is, a, if, if you have a chain complex, which is finitely generated over Novikov ring, then you have this, this, this structure. It's a kind of a simple algebraic theorem. And transverse transversality is necessary to make it finitely generated. So in the Lagrangian flare theory, uh, with all the honor, we prove the following theorems. Suppose you have this LB and L prime B prime, and this flare homology is in this form. And we have this Hamiltonian the human of phi, and we move LB by this phi. So phi of L and phi is of B, and this is the same. And suppose that you have a B, which is a kind of structure. Then, then AI minus BI is smaller than phi norm. That is a proper distance of phi from the identity. So, I mean, it is rather delicate because the flare homology over Novikov field is independent of Hamilton isotopy. That's important theorem in Lagrangian flare theory. But flare homology, torsion part of flare homology, actually is not independent. And if you, I mean, it, it is rather easy. So you have, you have this kind of structure. Then you can just move it like this. So this, this, this torsion part disappears. So, but Hamilton isotopy, the torsion part is not preserved, but the, this, to, this is a kind of torsion exponent is just smaller than this uh, over node. So you have some continuity fitness of this torsion exponent. That's a kind of uh, result. And this is somewhat important and uh, useful. For example, if you want to prove some um, uh, kind of uh, this so-called how, how much energy, how far energy one need to displace L from L prime, then you, you can still use this torsion exponent. So this is a, and this kind of torsion is important to study lambda zero. So this, this is the kind of Lagrangian flare theory depends continuously on Hofa the kind of distance. And there is a people who like uh, Albers, Usha, Kortelevich, Bilan Cornea, and those people study this kind of things uh, in, a, in a slightly different context, like uh, um, periodic Hamiltonian flare homology and kind of things like that. And Bilan Cornea study something related to this Lagrangian cobaltism, and they study this kind of things, but. Uh, I, I don't, I just mentioned their name because this is related to their work. So now something I want to do is the following things. So the, the point is that Lagrangian flare theory depends continuously on Hoover's kind of metric. But something I want to do is just, to, so, so this is a kind of additive structure. It's a, just a modular structure. And I want to explain here that the NPD category depends continuously on Hoover's kind of metric. So if you include this NPD structure still, this continuity holds. And uh, we can use the language of uh, globe of uh, house of distance to make this uh, rigorous statement. So that's something I want to explain. So let me recall what was the filter density category. The filter density category, first of all, you have this object C, it's a set of objects. Then we have a two object. We have this C, C, C prime. It's a space of morphisms. And I assume that it is free lambda zero module. In a case of this, uh, of, uh, this is a kind of free lambda zero module generated by intersection points. And we have this infinity operators. Yeah, I think usually I, I, I talk much, but it's something like, like this, right? So this uh, case, case product, and you have this uh, infinity relation. So this is a infinity category. And uh, for a moment, I want to assume M, M0 is zero. This means oh. that M1 is actually a boundary operator and the curvature is zero. Oh, uh, Kendra, uh, our morphism space is finite rank, lambda zero modules. Um, in, in, in many cases, yes. In the case, uh, if you consider all, all finitely many Lagrangian sum manifold, which are transversal, we can do so. Okay. But not in a limit, actually. I, I, I'll mention that later. So now, and I, I want to mention that this space of objects actually has a metric, or actually should metric. And the definition of should metric is actually very small to, to this uh, B model side. So, so this, this difference is smaller than epsilon. If you have this guy, so C and C prime, you have a morphism from to C to C prime, and the morphism from C prime to C, and self morphism F from C to C, self morphism S prime from C prime to C prime. 
And this T and T prime is closed, and it's a chip, it closed morphism. And you compose this, it's a D of S, and it is theta, theta, theta to the power epsilon times identity. And you go to the other composition, it is a T prime epsilon identity and this S prime. And, and also the composition is M2 and D is M1. And then I can mention that if you kind of, you know, if you have this C, then you can invert this uh, T to get the uh, uh, NVD category over lambda. Then this is a kind of invertible. So this implies that over, in this category of NVT category over lambda, this implies that the C and C prime are equivalent, homotopy equivalent, but not over, uh, over Novikov ring. And that is a kind of moving point. So I, I assume, so this is a distance. But actually, uh, for the story of uh, Groom household distance, I want to strengthen it a bit. So I want to define this infinite metric. The infinite metric is very similar. So suppose we, so in, in, in place of just T and T prime, we have this five sequence of TK from one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. TK prime, one, K, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And the escape, and the escape prime. And the T1 is just the same, same, same conditions. T1 and T1 prime is a closed map. And the T1, T1 prime is equal to T epsilon um, up to, up to co-boundary. T2, T1 is actually also T epsilon up to co-boundary. But we have some other relations. So we have some first to do S1 and go to T1. And then first to do T1 and do S, S1 prime. Probably this is minus, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot all the signs. And this difference is a co-boundary of S2. So that is the next conditions. And we also assume that you have S2 prime, S1 prime and T1 prime, and T1 prime and S1. And this difference is also kind of co-boundary. And this is like a second thing. And we, we have uh, infinitely many uh, relations like this. Uh, to think this immediate many relations, you can think as, as follows. If you look at this, these formulas, and this is very much similar to what is called the mora cartan equations. So, so this is kind of, you know, M2 and the M1. And this is something like identity. So this is some kind of a weak mora cartan equations. And you regard this as a weak mora cartan equation, you can just write down all the higher term of this mora cartan equations. And that is what we call this uh, infinite homotopy equivalence. And this uh, uh, infinite distance is something like epsilon. So this is an infinite, uh, in infinite distance, and I want to use it. And the theorem, the first theorem I want to mention is that this, this infinite distance actually satisfies triangle inequality. This is a bit non-trivial, but we can prove it. It's a, it's a kind of algebra, so I don't want to explain it, but this, is, this satisfies triangle inequality. But unfortunately, I, I, it seems not true that this infinite distance zero implies that the two objects are homotopy equivalent. We take inf. It's a bit nasty thing, but I don't know. Uh, but something we can prove is a form. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a triangle inequality. So now let me go to the case of Lagrangian sum manifold. So suppose we have a finite set of Lagrangian sum manifolds, and suppose two elements are transversal. Then uh, kind of the, the construction we have been doing for a long time is that you have a filtered infinity category whose object is a pair of LB and L is uh, this, this, in this finite set and B is a bounding cochain of this line sum manifold. So we take this uh, set and the theorem is you have this uh, uh, Hamiltonian diffeomorphism so that L and the phi of L are both in, in this set. Then we consider this infinite distance between LB and the phi L phi star B. And this infinite distance is smaller than Hofa metric between phi and identity. So this algebraic distance is actually somehow, you know, related to uh, this geometric distance in this Chekhanov distance. This is a proof. And the other thing I want to mention is the following things. Suppose that D, not, if, not necessarily infinity, LB and L prime B prime is zero, then and L is equal to L prime. So this distance is rather strong. strong. If, if this is kind of zero, then this two Lagrangian sum manifolds are actually equal. This is actually not so difficult to prove. I, I think basically the idea is very similar to Hofa, uh, but Chekhanov did for, this, uh, um, for the fact that this Chekhanov distance is a distance, but we can prove this kind of sense. And in, in some cases, I believe that this map, which go, which go from L to this uh, uh, object is something like an isometry. But I cannot prove it. But at least it is injective and uh, is a kind of one lip sheet. So now 
uh, I can define this notion of uh, filtered MPT category. So that's the following things. Uh, no, so, so a, a, a Grom household distance. Uh, maybe it is better to explain what is Grom household distance in a usual case. So yeah, suppose that you have the two metric spaces. So Grom of defined this Grom household distance between two metric spaces, which is smaller than epsilon, if and only if there exists Z, another metric space, so that Z, uh, there is isometric embedding from X to Y, and the uh, half of distance of X and Y in Z is actually smaller than epsilon. This means that for any P of X, there exists Q of Y, D, P, Q is epsilon. And for any Q of Y, there exists P of X, D, P, Q, epsilon. So this is the Gromov's original definition of Gromov house of distance, which goes back to something like 40 years ago. And this is very naive definitions. I believe that the, uh, at, uh, at the beginning, I, I look, uh, many people look at this definition. This definition looks too much naive to be useful. But actually, in these 20 years, it is proved that this Grom household distance is so important that uh, have many applications. And uh, I want to kind of, I want to use very similar definitions to define Grom household distance between two filtered NFT categories. That's the following things. So suppose that this, uh, uh, so I want to define this, uh, oh, no, 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 there's before. Yeah. Suppose we have this uh, two filtered AVT categories, and I want to call that uh, the Grumman household distance between them is smaller than epsilon. If there is this uh, third AVT category C, and F1, F2, which are AVT functor from C1 to C and C2 to C, and these are homotopy equivalents to the full subcategory. So this is a kind of, you have this uh, full subcategory of C and it, it is a homotopy equivalent to C1. And another full category of C, which is homotopy equivalent to C2. And then, uh, you know, this uh, NPT functor induces a kind of, so this one induces kind of uh, uh, embedding of all your set. It's induced by this infinity functor. And then we regard this two metric space, uh, and this is homotopy equivalent. So it means uh, we can see that this is isometric, isometric embedding. Then this house of distance on this of two subset is smaller than epsilon. So it means the following things. So this is I want any p on this far object. I have another object here whose this infinite distance in this object set of C is smaller than epsilon. I want for any object Q, there is P, so that this uh, infinite distance between P, Q are smaller than epsilon. So this is a definition of a Grom of Hausdorff distance of, between field and MVT category. And actually, this is a pseudo distance. Um, I cannot prove that this, if the Grom of Hausdorff distance is zero, then C1 is much equivalent to C2. It might be true, but I don't know. Actually, Grom of proves that the Grom of Hausdorff distance is zero and it's something compactness, then they are isometric. But, that, but this one is a bit more cumbersome. You know, this definition is very close, except somehow we, can, we, we are require this map with the object is covered by homotopy equivalence of NPT categories. So this, this looks very much a simple definitions. But the NPT story is a bit more complicated. So the, the, the next two theorem is a bit more difficult to prove, but we can prove it. So first the theorem is the following things. So this, this Grom household distance satisfies this triangle inequality. This is the first theorem. And the second theorem is that uh, if you have this, uh, so th this means that the CI is a Cauchy sequence of filtered AVT category, then its limit exists. But, uh, but actually we can say that the finiteness is lost.
So maybe I can say, what is finiteness means? Um, so let me take this AFT category. C is uh, gapped. If there exists G, which is a, oops, no, no, not, not C. This is a discrete additive monoid of non negative integers. So that to have all NVT operations, it's just something like a T lambda i m bar k i, and the lambda i is contained in this g, and this m bar k i is kind of uh, c linear. I mean, basically that this does not contain t. And this is actually very much related to Gromov compactness in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the story of the pseudo Gromov curve. Because this, this lambda i is basically simple area of holomorphic disk. And you have only finitely many Lagrangian sum manifold, which are transversal to each other. Then the holomorphic disk is kind of, the, the space of holomorphic disk is somehow uh, compact up to some energy. So you have this uh, discrete monoid. It means that if this, uh, uh, oops, this order, there is finite, then this is gapped. But if you see that this uh, limit, then the, the, so this one is gapped, but then the, the problem is uh, this limit may not be gapped. Actually, so we go back to this uh, uh, theorem, which I explained many uh, at the beginning. But if you see I such the same uh, gapping sequence, would it still put the limit to gap then? I mean, you, you know, you have a sequence and you have a gap by the same things, probably limit is gapped. But uh, in, in, in these situations, uh, you, you know, so the typical situations we consider is uh, something like this. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this theorem, right? Suppose we have this separable subset of uh, space of the sum manifold. Then we have this uh, Li contained in L and Li contained in Li plus one, blah, blah, blah. And this is, this is a finite set. Then we consider this F of Li. And suppose that this union of Li is dense in L, right? Because of separability, we, can, we have always choose it. And uh, then we can take this limit with respect to Gromov of half of this. This is actually by definition of this uh, F of L. And you can imagine that you have infinitely many Lagrangian sum manifold involved. And then you, you may have a very tiny, tiny holomorphic disk as I go to infinity. So the limit cannot be gapped. But still, we can, we can say about this uh, limit. And then actually, one need to kind of define this um, Gromov household distance a bit more carefully. That maybe I can explain. So suppose you have this. Uh, B, B, B prime, two chain complex of an orbital ring. And, uh, and this is a completion. This is rather delicate. Completion of B0, B0 prime is a completion. And then we have to consider this guy, which is extended. This is almost chain almost P equivalent. If you have if any W 
in B0 prime is finitely generated. And any epsilon, there exists G epsilon equals W to V0, so that D G epsilon plus G epsilon D is something like, it's uh, the power epsilon pi, with G epsilon V0 is zero. I mean, if this is, so th this is just a kind of chain homotopy equivalent. So you have an inclusion and you have an inverse. I mean, so you have this kind of, so, so in, in a simple cases, you have this B, B prime, I have a pi, and I pi is uh, um, identity plus uh, DG plus GD. This is uh, just a definition that this inclusion is a chain homotopy equivalent. But we a bit weakened that just you have this kind of T plus epsilon. And uh, we restrict to the finitely generated things. And uh, the lemma, if B, B prime is almost chain homotopy equivalent, then its homology is uh, almost isomorphic. This means that uh, you take this kernel of F and then you have T plus epsilon, it is zero. And the uh, image of F contained T plus epsilon H B prime or any positive epsilon. For example, the, the it, it is lambda zero divided by lambda, lambda is maximally ideal. This is C. And then you divide by lambda zero with lambda zero is zero. And C is uh, almost isomorphic to zero. And uh, I think there is a uh, notion called the uh, almost ring theory, which is developed by Gaba and Rameo. I, I think that is kind of appeared in this um, PID code theory or something, which I don't know anything. But the, 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 you know that, that's something related, very similar to this formal deformation theory we, we study. And what Gaba and Romero kind of this almost isomorphism is very similar to this notion in almost ring theory. So in in, in this kind of you know uh, in, in this kind of nasty situation that this uh, thing is not gapped, then there are some pathology occurs, and this this almost isomorphism is kind of taking care of this. And then, then, then if you replace uh, all this homotopy equivalence of infinity category by this uh, almost using this notion of almost chain homotopy equivalence, then we can still define notion of gram hustle distance, which is uh, kind of which satisfies triangle inequality. And here, so that is kind of really nasty things. It, it's a bit uh, kind of you know, not, not so good for, my, for, for stomach. But uh, it's true. Okay, yeah. So then, then, then this limit is, is, is uh, so it, 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 as far as we consider this gapped infinity category, then it is rather safe word. You can just use this usual homotopy equivalence. And for example, the important thing is that you have a, a you have a uh, infinity functors, which is a kind of a bijection on object and uh, Isomorphism on homology, you have a homotopy inverse, blah, blah, blah. That kind of things, to prove that kind of things, we use this gap to conditions. Basically, we need to use this uh, um, induction on energy filtrations, and the gap to, gap to is very important. But that does not hold if you go to the limit. So we need some nasty things. And this one is also related to the following point. So that this limit, as I said, is that the kind of, you know, um, uh, it's not not completely unique, but uh, you have a two limit. Then it's gromo household distance is zero. So what do I mean by gromo household? So what, what implies this gromo household distance is zero? One thing is that uh, if we consider this uh, space of objects, then they are isometric. So it's not so bad. At least this space of objects is uh, kind of canonically, yeah. 
So, question. So you consider the space of objects, they are, they are isometric. And then if you have these two objects, C, C1, C2, and corresponding object C1 prime, C2 prime, then this, you take this homology. And it is uh, almost isomorphic in the sense I just defined. It's, it's almost isomorphic induced by a map or if it's abstracted you know, all something? Uh, what any epsilon, yeah, but almost isomorphism induced by the map. That, that, that's the kind of things. And uh, this, this also must isomorphism preserves the multiplicative property. To state it a bit precise, it's a bit complicated. But you have a, a, any epsilon, you have this almost isomorphism. And this almost isomorphism respects this MPD structure. So I believe in a gap case, this is actually I, I equal to this some homospec equivalence kind of thing, but I don't know this. Actually, this. Uh, Gaba and Rameo developed some story of almost ring. And uh, I wonder if there is any kind of notion of infinity category over this category of almost ring. So that uh, this one is related to that kind of thing. But uh, this Gaba and Rameo's uh, book with something like 2,000 pages, so I didn't read it yet. <laughs> okay, that's almost a small reason. Okay, now this is that I just explained. So, uh, in the last part of my talk, I want to explain this uh, generating criteria over lambda zero. So this is something like I want to kind of uh, uh, an attempt to study this homology mirror symmetry over lambda zero. So you know that there are many works about uh, uh, homology mirror symmetry, but as far well as you know, most of them is uh, on over lambda or rounding. So, and, and one of the one of the important thing people use for, uh, to prove homology mirror symmetry is this generating criteria. Because the uh, category is very hard to calculate, and the people reduce to this finitely many object, so that uh, this finitely many object is good enough to, to calculate homological mirror symmetry. Probably this kind of idea goes back to Paul Zeider in the case of a cartic surface, and many people from that, from that time on use this kind of idea for many cases. And I want to, and, and, but this genetic criteria is known for logical fees. And uh, it seems very likely that uh, um, over Novikov ring, we cannot have a generator, finitely many generator. So over Novikov ring, we have to take infinitely many objects to understand it. Because, you know, this uh, every category over lambda zero knows so much. I mean, because, for example, as I said, that the two Lavalier summary for the equivalent over lambda zero, they equal. So it, it kind of knows almost everything about Hamilton and different morphism. So to finitely many is not enough, but still there are some genetic criteria that I want to explain. So first to formulate it, I want to record the following thing. Suppose I have a field of FT category, that there is something called the Yoneda functor. So we consider this right module. So right module is the following thing, right? You have a uh, C, oops. it's an object of this NVT category C, then this light module B is a real BC. It is a chain complex. And you have this map a morphism of C, C prime to B, C prime, and also higher things. So, so this one is, you know, this one is the light module structures, and all, you have all higher module structures. That is called the NVT module over NVT category C. And what this Yoneda functor do is that you have a AVD functor, Yoneda functor from C to this right module. This is kind of, you have a kind of C prime here, it's object here. Then this, this gives somehow C to, uh, which way? yeah, C to C, C prime C. Yeah, so you have a, so, so this is the object of C and you, you, you need to associate right module. So this, this right module, that, associate C to C, C prime C. This is this, this, this has a light actions. So this is called the infinity Yoneda functors. And, this, and the Yoneda theorem says that this is a homospec equivalence to the image. And this Yoneda, infinity Yoneda lemma holds over Novikov ring actually. Okay, so now I want to use this Yoneda lemma. And if you suppose L is a finite set of the Marina summary pole, so that two elements are transversal. Then uh, suppose L, L prime be another 
such a finite set. So we consider this composition. So this 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 f of l prime is a infinite category associated to this finite set, and because that is union, so you have this uh, inclusion functor f of l prime to f of l cap l prime. Then uh, we take this Yoneda embedding, right module between f of l, l cap l prime, and then we can restrict to get right module over over f of l. So we have this Yoneda functor. This, this goes from this f of L prime to right module f of L. But basically, this means that you, you take this uh, element of L as a kind of uh, test Lagrangian sum manifold and unknown Lagrangian because the free homology of object of L on. But the definition is the following things this finite set L is an uh, epsilon weak generator. If you consider this original thing and its image by this Yoneda functor and its household distance is smaller than epsilon. It means that if you look this uh, NVT module over this uh, F of L by taking free homology of unknown thing with free homology of L, then this approximate uh, original NVT category up to this uh, epsilon. That's a kind of reasonable notion of this epsilon weak generator. And in case if epsilon is zero, then this is a, a called a weak generator. But I don't believe that there is a finite set which is a weak generator. And then there's a conjecture. I believe I can prove this conjecture in the future, but it's still a conjecture. It's the following. So suppose we consider this open closed map from Hoshi's homology of this NVT category to, to set is F of L. It goes to the homology of X. X. I, I, I emphasize this. This is the image of this lambda zero. Then suppose that this uh, image contains t to the power epsilon of y. Then this L, L is an epsilon weak generator. And you know this uh, abzai and something we are supposed to write. So abzai and this abzai and the F cube is that if 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 this uh, Go to this x lambda, it's subjective. Then this is split generator. And the split generator, this is a strictly uh, theorem over lambda. We have a lot of homological algebra and which does not work over lambda zero. And um, I, I believe so. So, so you know, th these conditions, of course, implies that. Uh, Subjectivity over lambda, because C of epsilon is actually uh, invertible. So if you want to kind of make more precise version of this uh, uh, generating criteria, so that you, you take you have this uh, allow this uh, kind of one unit times two epsilon epsilons, then I think this is an epsilon weak generator, and I believe that one can prove it by just uh, looking with the proof of this usual generating criteria. But we need to work about it. That that, that I, I write it conjecture. So now, uh, finally, I want to explain a few, a few examples. The first example is the case of S2. Suppose X is S2, and let's take L this great circle. So, I mean, we take the following thing. We have this S2. We have this North Pole, and we have South, South Pole. We have this, this, this one. And you take many of them. So that if you consider this, this part, so that area is smaller than epsilon. Then we can prove, so you have this kind of, so you have to prove this, uh, a, a, so in this case, a, 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 a n is uh, this uh, S11. S1 in, then we can prove we have this open closed map. P from this hosted homology of F of Lm to homology of S2 lambda zero. This, so the image 
T contains one F, T, T to the power epsilon one. So epsilon, as I said, is a area of this kind. And this is actually rather easy to prove, so I just want to explain it. We have this many things. So you have this uh, Li, cap Li plus one is actually North Pole and South Pole. So let me write this Xi and this is Yi. So we call that a sum. This is actually a Hoshi's chain. And if you let this be, this goes to t to the power epsilon one. And if you know the definition of uh, open closed map, this is rather easy. You have this, this kind of things, right? So you take this disk. And the open closed map is something like accounting this guy. And this, 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 guy, this is actually something like this with xi and yi. And then this area is epsilon. So that is a very easy proof that this, this hit T of, T of epsilons. And then it implies that, uh, so if this conjecture is okay, if you consider all of them, then go to the limit, this P contain T epsilon Y for any epsilon. So this uh, set of all um, great circles, which contain North Pole and South Pole is actually a weak generator in this sense, but you have uh, S1 many things. But then, 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 then this implies that, I mean, this implies So this implies somehow if you consider this uh, any uh, infinity category, any of this, any of this uh, uh, finitely many set, or maybe just uh, everything, which goes to this light module over this F of L. So this is the S1 many things. This is the injective. And it's kind of not completely homotopic equivalent, but homotopic equivalent to the image. For example, at least it is in this isometry for objects. So you know, so 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 this means that uh, somehow you consider this length over S2 com completions and this object of this light module F of L. This is isometric embedding. No, no, this is actually embedding. So this is somehow related to this uh, first part of the conjecture. So this one is not actually a, 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 that, that kind of uh, formal deformation family, but this is some, I think this is a kind of natural thing which we call a, a landau Ginzburg model of a Novikov ring. So at, at a generic point, uh, so, so, so this uh, NVD category is something like, a, Yeah. So this NVT category is, uh, so we consider this um, mirror to S2. So over lambda, it is something like matrix factorization of this Y plus T one by Y, right? And there's just a two critical points. And then in this, in this uh, constructions, we have this, so this is over lambda, generic point. And for that's the usual point, you have this S1 many objects. And all this S1 many object just is isomorphic at a generic point, but this uh, you, you, uh, usual point you have this S1 many. And then, then you have an infinity category whose object is kind of parameterized by this two of S1. And uh, so this is the kind of core of this, uh, uh, some kind of Berkowitz spectra. And all the other objects, which correspond to any Lagrangians, is actually a module over this S1 many things. So this looks somehow very much similar to the stories that's uh, explained in the beginning. And at least in the case of S2, we can realize this. And we can do the same thing for the finitely many power of S2. And, and, and just take the pro product. And uh, actually, while I'm coming, I think I thought a bit other, other cases. For example, you have this genus, higher genus Riemann surface. And if you consider this L set of all closed geodesic, I think con conjecture is that this one is a weak generator. 
prove that you, you go start the set of all closure heuristics, then kind of it, it is kind of very densely, and you have this very small triangulations. So you can just do the same argument. And the other case is that the T2, so you go start T2. Then we have this uh, uncountably many S1. This is, is parallel things. And uh, so this is the S1. And you add two more objects, something like this. And uh, this is the kind of epsilon generator for any epsilon. You can see, you can, you know, you, you can, you can use this, uh, this very narrow rectangle and you take this uh, one, two, three, four object. This, 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 this goes to this, uh, uh, open closed map goes to this rectangle itself with the T to the power small epsilon. So this should be the generator. So I don't know higher dimensions that are like, other than S, product of S2, but then at, at least the, the, um, two dimensions, I think we, we know this uh, generator. But it's, yeah, I don't know what happens for the higher, higher, higher dimensions and to establish this case is very, very difficult. Okay, anyway, but the, my time is up, I stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, oh, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, yes. No? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can try. Yeah. Uh, no, first, first, it's some co a comment. Mm. Uh, maybe you, you heard it or seen uh, like several years ago. I proposed a program about how to study the relation with bridge and stability. Yeah. In or so for category. And it actually gives a really clean, pretty clean picture. It, and you see that relation with kind of arbitrary Lagrangians, more or less, and something on uh, B side uh, without this nasty categorical things. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, roughly, if you imagine to have a SYZ picture, yeah, yes. uh, when you have mirror symmetry, yeah, then, uh, then you want to say what are stable objects, and the stable mm -hmm. objects will be uh, complexes of vector bundles with norms. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't. I don't make specialization to special fiber. It's kind of a generic fiber with norms, mm -hmm. and when you have this vector bonds with norms, you can build immediately uh, Lagrangian subsets, maybe singular, maybe not not smooth, in mm -hmm. in a mirror site, and then you can say that there are special Lagrangian. Then it will be things which admit such norms will be stable, semi-stable objects, and that mm -hmm. will be definition stability. Yeah. So you see that it's kind of uh, you don't do any category at, at special fiber at all, but uh, you have some no in terms of object with norms and they correspond to actual Lagrangians and maybe not, not seen see infinity and so on in, in this side, yeah. Yes, so, yes, yes. No, I don't know. That's kind of suggestion to think in these terms. And mm, the question is, um, if you consider uh, like completion in Chicano metric, uh, Chicano Hofer metric, what kind of object do you get? You get uh, uh, kind of topological submanifolds, or uh... I don't know if it's even that. So, for example, if one consider the case of graph of smooth one form, yeah, smooth, 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 one, I don't know, graph of D of F, yes, yes, and then if I, if I converge C zero sense to some continuous function of F, yeah. Graph of DFI converges is a Cauchy sequence, actually, in the Chicano metric. Ah, I see. So it's a graph of differentials of continuous functions are limiting over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that kind see. of object is contained. So it's, it's a kind I of see. a nasty object. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. OK. OK, thank you. Yeah. So, so um, can you explain what is the, what, what is the reason that you like um, uncountable the So, I mean, this limit, so we need to construct somehow, you know, have an uncountable many Lagrange sum and for you, you want to approximate it by finitely many things. Yeah. Then you have an uh, inductive limit, but this is not a linear, the, the direct limit. So if you consider this uh, um, convergence, I, guess I can construct the limit of a sequence. But in that, in, it's, it's not a direct limit. The problem is something like this. You have this kind of you know, I, 
if j you play on the, you can um, again and then you consider this in this this inclusion this inclusions that is homotopic but it's not identical and so you, you, you need to construct some inductive limit of this uh, um, infinity functors and, the, and then, then you have this kind of you know nasty if you have a if you need uncountable many things you are not a directed limit but direct, this directed system is a bit nasty because you have two like something like this it is not uh, isomorphic but it is just homotopic but, but, but so it's a kind of problem of algebra not a problem of uh... yeah but i don't believe that the, in, in, under these conditions you have a, a inductive limit you know homotopy inductive limit is actually very nasty business and if it's a kind of exactly commute you can construct inductive limit but you think about the constructions. This one is just homotopic, homotopically. Yeah, sure. But I find like whatever category of infinity category, you take whatever limit you want. No, I think category of infinity category is not correct word. It's a two category of infinity category. Right. It's a higher category. But, but so, I mean, I have... so yeah, I mean, you can do this or the infinity category business of infinity categories. Probably you can take it. I see. Okay. But that, that's that's already a nasty business, and I don't. But, but, yeah. the, the point is, you you wanted to know somehow explicit model for limit. You only know how to write down how such a. I mean, it's a linear inductive limit. Yeah. Then, then you can do it. But this kind of is harder. I don't know how much it's technical. No, I, I... Sorry, may I also ask a question? This is Denis speaking on Zoom. Sure, please. Yes, so I was wondering I mean, the, the topology you're using, I mean, it's called Gromos Hausdorff, but it's really for the Hofer distance, which is much weaker than C0 distance, right? Because, yes. for example, you can approximate, say, the equator of a sphere by a zigzag that goes north, south, north, south all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea that of, I mean, so, so I think this topology is not very, I mean, it's very geometric in the sense of Hofer geometry. Yes. But it doesn't relate to C0. Do you have any idea what one might be able to do to kind of bring some C0 control into this? Uh, I think that, that kind of thing is related to something called uh, um, uh, 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 flux conjecture. And the something I can prove is the following things. Prove what I can prove it. So suppose that you have this L, Li, which, which is a kind of Cauchy sequence. And also, the I converges to L in a C0 sense. And the L is then this L I converges to L in this Hofer sense, Hofer kind of sense. That's a bit complicated to prove, but I think I can prove it. But uh, I don't know if there is a C0 convergence implies that this such a kind of convergence. Oh, I see. So I was asking about the converse, but uh, so this direction I believe is true and hard to prove. Yes. Um, but you know, this, this chicken of convergence is much kind of uh, nasty than Caesar convergence. No, it's it, something it, like a limited uh, D of continuous functions. So mm -hmm. you cannot expect it to it converge in a Caesar sense. Uh, agree. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I, I have maybe a question about algebra. Yeah, absolutely. Was saying at the beginning. So, 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 so you have some uh, variety category, whatever, over um, affine line. So it's, it's the same, the same kind of thing as Hilbert line. Uh, then you know you can make multiply of sheaves or something like that. And, and on such a space, uh, you have at least topology of maybe. On the other hand, you you've now described the. Metric of that space. Do you, you know that that metric is compatible with the kind of topology that I think it's, it's somehow a different kind of metric. This metric is somehow here about some special points. Then it, somehow it converges somehow how, how kind of, you know, have a homotopy equivalence and how fast this homotopy equivalence kind of, com, how, how this homotopy equivalence go to infinity near yeah, this bad point. So it's a kind of asymptotic thing. So, you know, you have a honest affine line. Yeah. Then it's a kind of more Archimedean type topology. So that's somehow different.